Hey, cute people. I just wanted to talk, and can we talk about fibroids? I know I'm not the only fibroid sufferer out there. A lot of us are suffering and probably in silence. For the longest time, I wanted to do this video because I just wanted to share with you my journey. I think I told you guys before, I'm not a teacher, but I'm definitely a sharer. So I'm not here to, to quote facts and give you the latest developments and all that other stuff. I'm not doing that. I'm just sharing with you guys my journey with my fibroid. Yes. Years ago, I worked with a young lady. She was a great friend of mine, and she had a fibroid. And I believe she may have been the first person that I knew that mentioned they had one. Every month, without fail, she had an accident. Every month. And the thing about it, it never went to the crotch of her pants. It always went up to like where the back pocket would be. Yeah, all the time. All the time. She was anemic. Um... She always had to have a stash of pads and tampons with her. And, of course, I did emphasize with her because I was like, wow, this is really something because she had to really stay on top of it. So not long after she mentioned she had a fibroid, I went to the um, GYN, and he told me I had a fibroid. So you know I was really upset because I'm thinking the same thing that happens to her will happen to me each month. At the time, he told me how big it was and told me I didn't have to be concerned because it wasn't big. And if it didn't bother me, I didn't have to worry about it. So if that's in 1999, let's flash back to maybe six years later when I started having some problems. I can't remember the first thing that happened when I knew that this thing was going to be a pain in my side. But I know um, I used to get clots every now and then and she did mention she had clots too which i thought wow that's really something to have to pass clots you know when you have your period i know tmi but if you're a woman then this should not bother you and if you're a strong man it won't bother you but anyway um yeah so that started happening and accidents oh my goodness you talk about accidents i used to be scared to go out the house do you hear me i like if my period came on Monday, if I could work it out where I wouldn't have to do much of anything, I would not. But of course, there were times when I had to go to work, so I did it. But I used to have a hard time. I used to want to stop women in the street and just say, do you see anything in my pants? Is anything in my pants? Is anything in my pants? Because it seemed like I... It was becoming heavy your than normal, but it wasn't as heavy as it ended up to be in the end. And I just always felt like I always had a gush. A lot of times it really was just that a gush, not like a little bit here, a little bit there. You go, you pat, you know, it's a little wet, and you go a little wetter. It was like, I hope no gush came out of my mouth. But anyway, yeah, so after a while, I started having that same problem that I would just start leaking all the time. And the funny thing is, just like her, which I don't understand, if you're a doctor, tell me why does it go up instead of down? Yeah, like if I had an accident, it would always leak up. Of course, that's the worst. If you have on a jacket or something, a coat, that's not bad. But if you have on, like, um, I don't know, something sh short, your 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 backside is showing, you know, your pants, you, you know, nothing covering your, your backside, that is horrible. That's a horrible feeling. It's a horrible feeling. I'll tell you the truth. For real. It's a horrible feeling when you sit down and you get up and something's um, on the chair. Oh my goodness, that happened to me once at work. And the funny thing is, it happened at a time when I was closing. So I was the only one there. So that wasn't too bad. But it was bad because I had to get it up off of the chair. And it wasn't a plastic chair or something. I could just swipe it. It was cloth. Oh my God, my heart broke and I sank. Yeah, so those things used to happen. And they are very disheartening because... 
it's embarrassing. Now, if you're by yourself, like I was in that case, that's not bad. But it seemed like every single time that I had my period, I went through the same exact thing. I was like, well, can this ever, will this ever stop? I know there's a lot of things that you can do probably to minimize them or you need to get rid of them, but they let you know that they can grow back. And I was like, oh, man, I just want to feel better. I don't want to have to always worry if my pants are messed up, if um, if I sneeze, because when you get a certain age, you have incontinence to think about, you know, and that's another thing within itself, especially when you have your period and you have a fibroid. But, you know, I used to have some really, really bad days with that thing, I'm telling you. But let me tell you, too. I used to spend a lot of money on um, tampons. At first, I didn't want to ever use a tampon, and just a pad would do. And then I had to get, I had to really sit down and get some um, tampons. And I used to use Super Plus. Do you hear me? And I would have to change that like within four hours. Super didn't do anything for me. Super was just like if I had on a regular, which did nothing, I had to use Super Plus. And I used to always wait until right they had a sale. Um, buy one, get one 50% off because I had to stock up because I could go through uh, a box of tampons. Let me see if they were, I don't remember how many were in the box, but I can go through them quite, quite quick. Same thing with pads. I would wait until they had a sale and I would stock up. I used two different sizes of pads, two different sizes. Of, I used to use two different sizes of pads. Remember I mentioned to you, I used to use the long one. I mean, it was long too. Maybe even longer than that. Maybe about this long. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, maybe about that long. And I would use that and then I would also use like maybe a regular size one. Um yeah, I would use those two pretty much together. And I would you take the big one and then put the smaller one on top. It used to be kind of bulky and very uncomfortable, but at least I felt secure. Now when I was at work I still had to change it and, you know, um, Make sure that I was okay because, like I said, once it just spurred, like I said, it would always do just a little spurt and that was it. If the pad was um, not situated right, I knew I was going to have an accident. So I always check to make sure that my pad was sitting right because, like I said, it's really embarrassing. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do because, like I said, I wasn't any, I never had pain, like backache or anything like that. I never really felt any pressure because I know sometimes you can feel pressure. Your fibroid could be sitting on your bladder or, I don't know, your kidney, your liver or whatever. But I never had any problems like that. So I was okay with that. I think the only thing that, the only reason I did not seek any type of help is because I figured once a month if I just did the right thing and made myself comfortable, I um, changed my pad every now and then, well not now and then, but changed my pad like every four hours then I would be fine. I wouldn't do much of anything. I wouldn't get up. I wouldn't move around. I wouldn't do any. I, I just wouldn't make any sudden moves <laughs> at all until I was padded up. That's the word I used to use. I gotta go pad up, pad up, I gotta pad up. And even now at my age, I just stopped having my period. And I'm in my, I'm 53. And this week here, I think I've had cramps, but no period, so thank goodness for that. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Maybe three times this week I had cramps. And there's another thing. I never used to have cramps when I was a teenager. I think I had started having I started having cramps when I was like in my 40s or my 50s. What was up with that? I don't know. Cramps are no joke. They used to hurt. They're very uncomfortable, I would have to say, more than anything. Um, yeah, so... Since I've been here in North Carolina, I've had my period maybe two or three times when I first got here. It was, you know, I would miss a month or two, then I would have it for a day or two, then um, two months would go by, maybe even three, then I'll have it for a day or two. Now, I still have cramps. I'm not sure how to explain that. Maybe I still have an egg. <laughs> Obviously, I guess I still have an egg because that's what your cramps are, right? The little egg moving down or up your fallopian tubes into your ovary, however that may work. So I'm just hoping that it um, 
she just goes away somewhere because I do not want to have my period. But the funny thing is I still have some pads. I have some pads and I have some um, tampons that I got from the doctor's office. Because recently I went to the doctor. She didn't tell me how big it was. I was supposed to have an ultrasound to find out how big it was because I'm curious because if I touch my stomach in a certain place, I can feel it. And it doesn't hurt. I don't feel any pain or anything. Like I said, the only setback for me really is that it's big. So my stomach pokes out a little enough. And being fat and having a poked out stomach because of a fibroid, I don't like that. But um, at one point, as far as what I wanted to do with Bill, I think some people may find it easier to have a hysterectomy to me, I would not have ever elected to have that. I think I would have chosen, I believe, where they freeze them off and since they don't get any blood supply, your tumor, your fibroid, fibroid would die. I would have chosen that, but no way in the world I would have chosen a hysterectomy. Now here I am in my late 50s. I'm at the dawn of my reproductive cycle. I'm at the dawn of the sunset. I'm going to make it be dramatic with it. I'm at the sunset. Yeah, because the sun is going down. So I'm at the sunset of my reproductive age. And hopefully, because I don't have certain hormones, that this fibroid will shrink and disappear without me having to do anything medically. But as soon as I can and when I can, I am going to get a um, fi- uh, ultrasound because I'm very curious to know how big it is, if it shrinks ever, will it go away? I want it gone. I want it gone without having to do too much to get rid of it. Um, I don't want nobody cutting my navel. I don't know. If that's something I have to do, then I will do it. But I really, really want to get rid of this fibroid. You know, and like I said, if I didn't say it before, and I'm going to say it again or say it now. Answer my poll, because I'm really curious. And if you have a fibroid, leave some information for me down below, because I want to know if you have one, how long it's been since you've um, known you had it. If you had one and you got rid of it, what did you do? If you're my age, if you still have your period, I mean, let let me know. I, I want to know, because I'm really curious, because like I mentioned, I want to get rid of this fibroid by any means necessary. That's not true <laughs> by any means necessary because I ain't doing too much. Even when I was in my 40s, I kept saying I will wait until I got into menopause and then hopefully the fibroid will go away. So I'm hoping that will be my case. I'm hoping that, like I mentioned, since I won't have certain hormones, which would be estrogen. Yeah, and if you're a doctor, you can explain it to me because... um. I'm definitely, definitely willing to. Like I said, I am not a teacher, so I don't sit here to talk about um, why you get them, how you get them, the procedures or anything like that. This is just my journey to tell you all that I had a fibroid. It made me sick. Well, not physically sick, but mentally I was tired of it. I'm just ready for this thing to go away and disappear. So like I said, this is pretty much my journey into fibroidism. As far as um, going to the doctor and all that, I never did a lot of following up on it. Um, Usually when I have a doctor, I try to keep the doctor for a very long time. But the first doctor who diagnosed me had retired. He was an older man, so he retired. And I started seeing another doctor, and she left her practice. And I started seeing another doctor, and she, I'm not sure what happened, that I didn't continue to see her. And then I came here. But like I mentioned, they always tell you if it doesn't bother you, leave it alone. And it didn't bother me. Um, But like I mentioned, at some point it got to the point where my flow was just really, really heavy. I mean, yeah, really, really heavy. So if your flow was heavy, tell me why. Um, I'm just curious to know. Like I said, I just want to share this story. And um, there's no need for me to make a video about being my age and having my period, right? Um, Because I had no intention of doing that because I know I'm not the only one. Yeah, and if you happen to be a mature baby doll and you come past this video and you have your girlfriend, she still visits you, let me know. Make me feel like I'm not. 
real while, I'm telling you, I used to feel so abnormal. I went to the doctor and I think I was just in my 50s. And he told me, um, I think I mentioned to him, I was anemic. You know, I was going to the hospital with my pulmonary embolism. And I told the doctor that I was anemic. And he said, you still get your period? I wanted to say that you were a doctor. That shouldn't be unusual for you to hear something like that. But he wasn't a GYN. But I felt so, that's the first time I felt so different yeah i did i felt really different and then most of my friends that i know that are in their 50s or have been approaching their 50s a little bit before i did they were just about finishing this and here i am 53 i'm going to be 54 in um three months and i went to a website um I can't think of the name of it. I Googled it because I wanted to see um, what other women were talking about. But there are a lot of women in my boat, so I'm not the only one. But when you think you're the only one with something like that, and you know that most people are going through it or went through it already, and you still have yours, or it could be anything, really. You know, it just makes you feel so different, weird, different. But like I said, I just wanted to talk about my fibroid. And really, this video is really to see who else out there has the same situation that I had. Or going through the same thing that I'm going through. Or maybe just the simple fact that you were um, or are a young lady going through the same thing. If you have any questions, I'll definitely answer. If you want to know more, I'll try to answer that in the comments. Just ask me and I'll let you know. But like I said, answer my poll comment on this video yeah very simple subscribe to my channel simple again and that's it for me i am going to end this video now because i need to get myself to bed and get some sleep because i have to work tomorrow um yeah so i just want to say thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video Hopefully, I'll see you in the next. And you know I want you cute people to share and spread love.